Hello, my name's Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com and welcome to this week's supply and demand forex technical analysis. If you are new, welcome and if you're returning, welcome back and I really do hope that you find my videos of some use. Every week, um, your feedback and comments are really appreciated. And if you do have any questions, just leave them in the uh, comment section box below. And uh, or you can basically just email me at info at trading180.com. Also in the description box below is uh, um, the pairs are time stamped, so you can skip forward to your favorite pairs. But what we're gonna do is start off as we do all, every week on the uh, fundamentals and a little bit of sentiment. So uh, the week ahead, uh, it's a website called Trading Economics, great website, um, we use it basically daily. Um, so in the week ahead, we have important data includes US jobs report, so non-farm payrolls, ISM PMIs, trade balance and factory orders. Um, so for the US, we've got quite a lot of uh, uh, news coming out, UK market PMIs, Eurozone final first quarter GDP figures, that's going to be important as well. Uh, growth wise for Europe inflation definitely important and retail sales Germany factory orders and trade balance Germany is Europe's uh, pretty much number one uh, country uh, powerhouse when it comes to uh, um, driving uh, the European um, economy as a whole so any slowdowns in, uh, in 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 you know German data um, especially that trade balance is going to have an effect on the whole of Europe China uh, Caxin, I think that's how you pronounce it, PMIs, um, um, and Japan Nikkei PMIs, um, and you have Australia's first quarter GDP growth, um, that's going to be also important, anything to do with GDP is quite important, and trade balance definitely, the ECB, uh, European Central Bank, RBA, Reserve Bank of Australia, and Reserve Bank of India, um, will be uh, deciding on monetary policy again um, very important because the central banks really are the um, the are trying to balance uh, monetary policy because they are trying to balance in conjunction with the government um, I guess the economy as well and their policies affect a currency's uh, value um, and strength so got a lot of things going on this week um, also sentiment wise um, if you're if you're not aware you should be especially if you're in uh, trading forex you know people say that fundamentals and you know uh, don't don't watch the fundamentals technicals are where it's at um, I don't believe that for a minute um, but you should be aware that <clears throat> there is um, you know a bit of a trade war i say a bit of but there is a trade war going on and uh headlines from the washington post is trump's stunning decision to escalate trade wars with china and mexico signals a turning point for u.s policy so um what's happening is basically donald trump is increasing tariffs um trade tariffs on china and mexico and basically financial investors are um, uncertain as to how that's going to affect really uh, economies the US economy China's economy Mexico's economy and really the global economy so there's a lot of fear um, around um, so what we, what we call risk off we're in a risk off environment um, and China targets FedEx's trade war escalates and this is from Forbes um, and again, these uh, I'll, I'll post these articles as well if you want to have a quick look in the uh, description box below. So um, risk off sentiment and there are certain um, currencies that do well in a risk off environment. And if you want to know, um, you know a bit more about fundamentals and risk sentiment analysis, um, have a free for its course. Um, basically, the, the, the beginnings and uh, um, Basically, I, I talk about risk on and risk off sentiment, how to apply it to the market and um, pretty much try and keep you on the right side of the market. So depending on the environment that we're in. Um, so, yeah, that's what we have. That, that link is in the description box below. Totally free. Have a look um, and uh, tell me what you think. Also, if you click on the fundamental analysis spreadsheet takes you to here and this is when risk is on this so this is all when risk is on when risk is off the yen and the swiss franc will tend to uh, strengthen right so you and i'll show you that in the technicals as well um this week so starting off on the dollar index and the technical analysis 
And we have, from last week, had a bit of a sell-off and then we had prices come up pretty much again into this supply zone before again selling off. I think Donald Trump's uh, um, surprise increase in uh, for, from Mexico tariffs and increasing them from 5% up to potentially 25%, um, you know, is having an effect on the US dollar and probably may do in the foreseeable future and into next week. So um, risk off at the moment. Let's look at the live chart. So uh, right now, if you're looking to short the dollar, what you wouldn't do is short the, the, the US dollar, um, the, the, the Dow Jones dollar index per se, you would be looking for short entries on the uh, dollar crosses. And this we use the Dow Jones dollar index, which is a measure of dollar strength against the, dollar, um, <clears throat> the yen, the euro, the pound, and the Australian dollar. Um, and if you see prices start to sell off here, overall, um, you know, we should see a sell off on the other dollar crosses. So um, right now we're up, are up into an expensive area, right? We're up into basically some highs. So we could see prices start to sell off. So what you'd be looking for is short trades on the dollar yen, dollar Swiss, etc. If you're looking for buy trades, then you'd be waiting for either demand zone here or for prices to start to look like they're turning up, right? And uh, look for that as confirmation on the Dow Jones dollar index. Um, I think there's going to be a, some some negative sentiment, to be fair, on the uh, Dow Jones dollar index. But the Dow Jones, well, I say the US is still the best economy out of you know the uh, the eight countries so maybe you're just looking for maybe a bit of a pullback you might want to sit on your hands until maybe non-farms and then see what happens and then uh readjust but what negative sentiment really does is just pulls prices to where we want to be buyers so i'm still long on the dollar but um uh this week i'm going to be a bit more cautious on um on some dollar trades so moving on to the dollar yen and the dollar yen, um, decent uh, level to get long from last week. You know, prices did start to turn up. And then Donald Trump decided on Friday he wanted to uh, raise, uh, surprise everybody with um, the Mexican tariffs. So um, again, risk off. The Japanese yen does extremely well in a risk off environment. So you've seen this massive bearish candle overall we're in a risk off environment anyway there's a lot of things going on from european um problems in italy brexit um you know in the uk we haven't got uh you know prime minister at the moment i think she steps down uh, this week and there's a leadership you know contest um you know with brexit being uncertain no deal brexit or wto brexit there's a lot of things going on china slow down so you're seeing overall the bigger picture you know the uh risk off currency the japanese yen you know really start to uh, strengthen so what does that mean let me go back to the, uh, the charts what you're looking for now delete these demand zones as there is no demand there proven demand if you're looking to be a buyer right now there would be anywhere around here you'd be looking for and putting this 108 round number potentially looking for some sort of profit taking risk off can change if donald trump decides to then you know surprise the market and say okay well you know what i do want to do a deal i want to back down etc then the us dollar will probably end up strengthening um from a short perspective and if you're continuing to trade potential risk off sentiment then you'll be looking for basically a pullback into this supply zone before looking to get short. And basically what you're doing is buying the Japanese yen over the US dollar. So right now you've got an opportunity depending on um, what happens next week. If uh, you know Donald Trump continues with his rhetoric and uh, stick to his guns, which I think you probably end up will doing, then um, we could see uh, you know, 
basically moves to the downside. Obviously, there's going to be pullbacks. There's always pullbacks in a in a risk off environment, just like there are in a risk on environment. But if you are looking to buy, then um, just maybe adjust your expectations as how as to how far prices may move to the upside. Um, moving on to the dollar Swiss. Dollar Swiss is pretty much in the same boat as the uh, as the yen. The Swiss franc will benefit from a risk off environment. So this week we did have a bit of a turn up back up into this supply zone. And again, short trades from here. Um, if you were trading risk off, right? So you've had nice trade trading some risk off sentiment. Um, we're now down into this demand zone. We've got basically a cluster of demand all the way out all around here and what you want to do in situations like this is look for supply and demand equations so where is there most likely to be you know more demand than supply so not only do we have value within this area what we've got is a level of support and resistance That's why and why is support and resistance you know um why do we look at support and resistance because other traders look at support and resistance so we know that technical traders are going to be looking at this level as a level of resistance, 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 bit of support here, bit of, bit of support here, and then we've got horizontal support. So there'll be hopefully some uh, some demand coming in here from a technical analysis perspective. We've also got diagonal support and resistance, one, two, and then we've got an area right here. Right, so we've got trend line traders looking to get long potentially in this area as well. Fundamentals and sentiment do outweigh technical analysis, but if you are looking to get long, we've got a lot of confluence here. Um, if you are looking to get short, then you'd be really looking for this is created a new low, so you'd be looking for prices to really kind of come back up into this area here before looking at you know some some short trades. So if risk is off, you're looking for pullbacks, you could take advantage of some risk on sentiment potentially, or basically I wouldn't say even risk on sentiment, I would probably more say um, uh, profit taking and also potentially traders looking to get long around here. But Swiss franc um, at the moment is um, looking strong from a sentiment perspective, not necessarily fundamental, it's very weak fundamentally, but um, the market at the moment is uh, risk off driven uh, moving on to the dollar cad and the dollar cad has literally been in a bit of a range did have a bit of a breakout here um, bit of a pin bar into this supply zone and I was saying last week that remember just be careful if you are looking to get short the more time the level is touched the weaker it becomes and you see prices basically basically drift up into this area and kind of break above I say break above but spike above spike above um, and uh, at the moment we are within this uh, supply zone out of the two I would say the dollar is is uh, the stronger out of the two and we probably tend to do better than the uh, the CAD even in a risk off environment so CAD if you are looking to potentially get short you'd be looking for short trades now intraday if you are looking to get long then what I would suggest and what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this level of supply slightly higher just so that we've got a bit of space to uh, draw a bit of demand zones some demand zones here so demand as you've made new highs and what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag this as well probably to around here and clean this up a little bit and get rid of that so what you'd be looking for is prices to kind of come down into a level of again demand if you're looking to buy and, and what you want to do is look for other confluences like some horizontal support within that area there <clears throat> So looking now at the New Zealand dollar, US dollar, and New Zealand dollar, US dollar, um, we were, we did start to turn up at this point. So last week we did get a bit of a pullback back into this area here. <clears throat> Prices are 
starting to you know basically look to probably range within um, this low and potentially one of these supply highs so um, if we're looking at the New Zealand dollar I still think the uh, the US dollar is going to be stronger than the uh, US sorry the uh, US dollar is going to be stronger than the, the New Zealand dollar so um, any short trades you're looking at you know getting short here because we've got also a level of levels of support here support should turn resistance in areas of value but if you are looking to take advantage of some potential dollar weakness really we've had you know really no significant pullback after moving down since um, March uh, end of March and we're now in June so potentially we could be starting to see some profit taking going on in this area and prices may start to pull back and this could be some shorting opportunities into the week buying opportunities you would really have to believe that the New Zealand dollar is probably getting stronger than the US dollar or you can be taking advantage of some US dollar weakness potentially and especially that we've seen it on the uh, on the Dow Jones dollar index so potentially we could see weakness and then the New Zealand dollar strengthen in that department when it comes to new demand zones what I am going to do is just clean this up a little bit <coughs> put that there yeah I think that's about it yeah that'll do um, now moving on to the pound dollar and the pound dollar last week we came up into this supply zone and then sold off and now we've come down into this demand zone again coming down into this uh, um, horizontal support as well putting in a, a little pin bar here so we could again see the same thing uh, like the New Zealand dollar where we've had prices really just come down no really no pullback so we could see some sort of pullback coming into the market um, doesn't mean that you should necessarily get long if you are uh, you know I guess a trend trader then you'd be looking for short trades so you know the dollar as much as it's going through its problems you know with the trade war I think the British pound is uh, is going to be is, is worse off at the moment so short trades back up into you know this supply zone here or if prices come up all the way up here that's a good maybe a few hundred pips but I would probably say anywhere within this area here um, is a decent shorting opportunity if you are looking to get long now is probably the time or better yet the low really the low of the range but from a fundamental pers perspective you know the dollar I think is the um, is the uh, currency to buy uh, looking at the euro dollar and the euro dollar this week price is pushed up touch this uh, supply zone here and then pretty much sold off nice nice trade there and uh, again we're in this we're in a range between you know this high and this low what I mean by that is if we go up to the euro dollar got a bit of a high and a bit of a low why is that significant because the market is saying that this is an expensive area and this is a cheap area right depending on which uh, currency you're buying so from a dollar from the dollar perspective this was this was a bargain and you can see why bargain prices into that supply zone and you know buyers pretty much got in and to buy the euro dollar you need to press sell on the euro dollar currency as it is the quote currency you can see where prices pretty much sold off now is this uh, going to be a bargain area for the euro at the moment this could be profit taking or it could be a buying opportunity and especially if you know the dollar starts to get weak uh get weaker also we've get some positive news out of europe right then this could potentially be a decent trade to the upside i think prices maybe have gone a bit too far at the moment um so you'd be looking for some sort of pullback intraday before looking to get long just be careful though that this level has been touched you know 
once, twice, three times. Again, the weaker levels touch, or the more levels touch, the weaker they become. So, uh, and they're more open and susceptible to uh, manipulations, right? So, uh, yeah, just be careful right now. Prices are really up to this uh, fair value area between this high and this low. So this isn't necessarily the best area to look for any kind of long trade. You'll be looking for maybe a kind of pullback if you're looking to buy the euro. And if you are looking to buy the dollar, then you'd be looking for prices to probably come up to, you know, this this high here before looking at getting short. Better area would be this area here, this one, uh, one three level. Moving on to the euro yen and with risk off sentiment we've literally just again continued to sell off you know the yen has uh, strengthened and continued to strengthen Europe's going through its own problems so uh, again no surprise to see this start to occur All right, so what I'm going to do first is just adjust this, uh, this demand zone down to around here. Uh, I'll keep that supply zone, and what I'll do is I'll just make it make a couple of supply zones here. I think this one right here. All right. So what you're looking for, if you're trading risk off, is a pull back into supply or any of these levels here. We do have an area where it has been touched as support and resistance in the past, probably maybe a bit wider. So there, where you've had resistance, support, support, bit of support here, then resistance. So you've also got value from supply zones. You've also got technical traders looking to get short potentially in these areas as well. So decent, if there is a bit of positive news for the Euro, then you're looking at some long trades in and around these areas here. Moving on to the Aussie US dollar. And last week we did kind of just really just move sideways to be fair. There really wasn't any, uh, any um, strong moves um, with the RBA Reserve Bank of Australia potentially coming out and uh, you know uh, on monetary policy this week um, we could see again some uh, some short trades and I think the uh, Australian dollar uh, the Reserve Bank of Australia is going to be very dovish they were talking about cutting last month they didn't cut so um, I think they're probably going to end up cutting again as the or say cutting again or looking to cut interest rates um, as the uh, China war escalates. So what we have is potentially if you see a move up into this level this week, I'm looking for some short trades. And from a demand perspective, if you were looking to potentially buy the Australian dollar, <clears throat> then these would be your options. This one, this demand zone here isn't necessarily the strongest. It has made a new high, but it wouldn't be the strongest area. You'd want to see prices really kind of you know, turn up a bit more before looking to potentially get short. But those are your areas to look for potential long trades, but I'm looking for short trades on this pair. And finally, you have the Australian dollar, Japanese yen, and again, risk off being in the market. You know, you had the Japanese yen strengthening. There was, you know, some buying opportunity, but you know, again, risk off sentiment kind of took over, and you can see where prices are falling. So this week, updating the charts. Um, I'm going to move this demand zone slightly down again a bit more just to give it a bit more room so maybe around here and what you have is probably like a wider supply zone right here put up to that high there so again what you'll be looking for intraday as well so you use the daily demand zones and then you'll be looking for 
or daily supply zones and then looking for prices to kind of come back up into these sorts of areas if you're looking to trade risk off from a risk on perspective if everything starts to turn out as in work out then now is really the time potentially for any kind of uh, long trades but again you'd be looking specifically uh, for some positive news and not just positive news just uh, I would say for you know the uh, China and the uh, and the uh, US to really kind of de-escalate the um, the war rhetoric so um, that's pretty much it for this week I um, hope you have enjoyed the analysis if you do like subscribe and comment in the section box below I hope you all have a great trading week and guys take care